I'll remember what chapter 11 he talks about the people start complaining. And when it says, and the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes, and when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them, and his sin somehow lying parts of the camp. So basically, what pretty much happens is, uh, Israel starts complaining to God, you know, why are we doing this? You know, why are you sending this into this wilderness? Why, 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 why? Finally, God just got ticked off. He got tired of it, and he consumed some of them with his fire. He, so he had them killed. God hates God hates complainers pretty much. Um, it says uh, then the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. So the name of that place was called Tibera, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Now the now the rabble that was among them had a strong craving, and the people of Israel also wept again and said, Oh that we oh that we uh, had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt. That cost nothing, the, cu the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna, which is bread, uh, to look at. Now the manna was like a uh, coriander seed, and its appearance like that of bedillium. People went out, you know, people went about and gathered it and ground it into hand mills to beat it, or beat it in, in mortars, and boiled it in pots and made cakes of it, and the taste of it was like the taste of cakes baked with oil. When the dew fell upon the camp in the, in the night, the manna fell with it. Moses heard people weeping throughout their clans, everyone at the door of his tent, and the, and the anger of the Lord was and the, uh, the anger of the Lord blazed hotly. I mean, God just got totally ticked off at him, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, "Why have you dealt ill with your servant, and why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay in the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all this?" Um, all this people that give them birth that you should say to me carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing child to the land that, that you swore to give, their, to, give them to their fathers where I, where I am to get meat to give to all this people but they sweep before me and say give us meat that we may eat I am not able to carry all this people alone the burden is too heavy for me if you will treat me like this kill me at once if I find favor in your sight that I may not see my rich my wretchedness. Elders appointed to aid Moses. And the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the temple uh, of the people, and, and officers over them, and bring them to the tent of meeting, and let them take their stand there with you. And I will come down and talk with you there. I will take some and I will take some of the spirit or the Holy Spirit that is on you and put it on them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you that ye may not bear it yourself alone. And, and say to the people, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, and ye shall eat meat. For ye have welcomed the hearing of the Lord, saying, Who will give us meat to eat? For it is better for us, for us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat just one day, or two days, or five days, or ten days, or twenty days, but a whole month, until it comes out at your nostrils, and it comes loathsome to you. Because you have rejected the Lord who is among you and have dwelt before him, saying, Why did we come out of Egypt? But Moses said, The people among whom I am numbered six hundred thousand on foot, um, and you have said, I will give them meat, that they may eat a whole month. Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them and be enough for them? Or shall all the, or, or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them and be enough for them? The Lord said to Moses, is the, is the Lord's hand shortened? Now you shall see whether my, my word will come true for you or not. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered seventy men of, of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, spoke to him and took some of the Spirit, or the Holy Spirit, that was on them and put it on the seventy elders. And, and as soon as the Spirit rested on them, they prophesied. But they did not continue doing it. And the two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Was that all the Lord's people were prophesying? Uh, 
says with that all the Lord's Lord's people were prophesied or were prophets the Lord would put his spirit on them and Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp so so um basically jo I mean not Joseph but, but Joshua um ran to Moses and was like Moses why is this going on you know why are these people prophesying and um Moses Moses was like why aren't you jealous you know you know um be glad that they're prophesying the word of God. Be glad that they're trying to get people saved. You know, why are you complaining? And, and this goes to the people in churches now these days. And I know many. I mean, no names, but um, you get people. You got people in churches that love to complain about every little thing. And you and I know it. They they complain about um, what what preachers want to preach. They want to control preachers. They're false Christians. I mean, how can you say you're of God but yet you want to control what what preachers preach? You want to you want to complain about the word of God? I don't believe you're saved to be honest, because you're truly saved. You're going to accept God's word as it is, amen. Anyway, but that's what it's talking about. Stop being complainers. Just stop. Accept God's word as it is and just love and just love God, repent your sins, and love for him. Yeah. Um so so, so stop complaining. Pretty much, just accept God's word as it is, and just let that be it. Um, let's see here. It says, "It says quail and then a plague, and a wind from the Lord sprung up and it brought quail from the sea and let them fall beside the camp. About a day's journey on this side and a day's journey on the other side around the camp, and about two cubits above the ground. People arose all the, that day and all the night and all the next day and gathered the quail." Those who gathered least and gathered ten homers, and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. While the meat was yet between their teeth, before it was before it was consumed, the anger of the Lord was kindled against his pe against the people, and the Lord struck down the people with a very great plague. Um. So, well, let me read this again. It says, uh, "Then a wind from the Lord sprung up, and it brought brought quail from the sea, and let them fall beside the camp." About a day's journey on this side, and a day's journey on the, on the other side around the camp, and about two cubits above the ground. And all, and all the people rose all, the, all that day and all that night on the next day and gathered the quail. And those who gathered the least gathered ten homers, and, the, and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. While the meat was not, when the meat was yet between their teeth before it was consumed, the anger of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord struck down the people with a very great plague. Meaning that. Pretty much, um, they stopped. They stopped having faith in God, and they started having, and they started um, trusting their own selves. Pretty much, in which it ticked off God, and God had some of them killed because of it, because because they weren't putting their faith in God. That they were trying to um, trying to do things in their own their own way instead of putting their faith in God. So therefore, the name of that place was called Kiboroth Hadava because. There they buried the people who had the craving. From Kibroth Hatava, the people would journey to Hazaruth, and they remained at Hazaruth. So basically, eleven chapter eleven is very it's a very um very intense chapter because because of course the people complain and God's wrath was kindled and God struck some of them dead because because he got tired of them complaining so much. Um, that's why that's why I stop complaining about stuff. Just just accept things as they are. Accept God's word as it is because it's God's word. It's not going to change. God's word stands because it's God's word. It's holy and it and it is it is a uh, is, is revealing who God is. So you people out there who are in churches who who, who, uh, who complain about what preachers preach, stop complaining. If they're preaching the true word of God, you accept that no matter you know no matter what. If they're true preachers of God, you accept. You accept God's word as it is, and if they're, pre if they're truly preaching the word of God, you accept that and stop complaining about it. Because right here, God says He will strike you down if you keep complaining about it, pretty much. So stop. Um, and stop and stop trying to control uh, churches and, and stop trying to control preachers out there trying to preach the word of God right. And stop and stop and stop trying to tell them what they will preach and what, and what they will not preach because they've been doing that. I don't believe you're saved at all. I believe you're a false Christian that that's going to burn the fires of hell unless God saves you and repent. Because a true Christian will accept God's word as it is and will not try to control people on what they will or will not preach. 
And there's many churches out there that there are like that. So just be careful. With church, what, so basically, be careful about these churches. Make sure they're truly of God and truly preaching the word of God. Anyway, also it talks about elders appointed to aid Mo, to, to aid Moses to help Moses. Um, you know, with the with the count. And you get the quell and the plague, pretty much. The people, the people uh, were complaining about not having food. Um, they stopped having faith in God, pretty much, and and, and um, they got kind of they started getting mad at mad at God because they didn't have food. And God ended up sending them food, but out of that, since they didn't have faith in God, to for God to deliver that, He sent a plague upon them because they got tired of them, like I said, complaining. So if you're complaining about about things, stop complaining. Especially if you're complaining about God's word, um, and if you're somebody out there that's trying to control these preachers about what they will and will not preach, if you're trying to control the church, if you're if you're trying if you're trying to control things, um, I don't like I said I don't believe you're truly saved. I believe you're a false Christian that's trying to that's trying, that's trying to control God's word, and that's a big no-no. Because here God says He will strike you down dead if you if you try to do that. And I'm not not do it plain and simple, but um you know, but like I said you accept God's word as it is because it, it, it is the true it is the true word of God and you accept it because it is the word of God and you follow it and you repent your sins and you come across for salvation and you live for Him Amen. But like again, like I said again, stop complaining about things. You accept God's word as it is. If you if you're these Christ, if you're these Christians out there that are trying to control a church, that's trying to control what a preacher will will not say. You're not a true Christian at all. You're false. You will burn in hell. You repent of what you're doing. Because true Christians who truly love God will not do that. Plain and simple. So again, that is chapter 11. I'll be right up with chapter 12.